In my last video, I successfully built a simplified version of a ramjet out of carbon fiber. Even though I got great results from that design, it still had many flaws, the biggest being able to reliably control the ignition and fuel flow. That's why in my new design, I've integrated an open-end combustion chamber to allow for a better air-fuel mixture and reduce the chances of the flame being blown out. Along with the combustion chamber, I've also switched from using a normal ducted EEF fan blade to a traditional compressor wheel, similar to a turbocharger in a car. In a traditional car turbocharger, there is a compressor wheel connected to a turbine wheel with the shaft and both ends are connected to the engine with the compressor wheel, creating a higher compression for the combustion of fuel and the turbine receiving the combustion exhaust to continue turning the compressor. A jet engine is also similar to this in the same way the turbocharger keeps running. In a jet, the compressor does the same action as the turbo and compresses the incoming air to create a better environment for combustion inside of the combustion chamber, where the air and fuel are mixed and expand when ignited, then sent out to the turbine for exhaust which continues to turn the compressor and the cycle keeps going. This is the compressor wheel for the engine printed on an SLA printer with ABS-like resin. The model has very good dimensional accuracy and strength, but it is also very brittle. I printed a special housing unit for the brushless motor and the compressor. The body is three pieces, the inlet, the motor mount which is also connected to the carbon fiber section of the engine, and these are both sealed together with a TPU printed gasket. In this version, I decided to create a working spark plug that could be removed and replaced if needed. I did this by 3D printing a thin walled tube with holes for the wires and filled the rest with plaster. After the plaster was set and dried, I removed the 3D printed material and was left with this shape. This plaster can withstand up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect for this application. I changed the ignition system, making it more reliable than before. In previous setups, I used a servo with two pieces of metal to complete the circuit for the electric lighter, which is very unreliable. In this version, I'm using a mechanical switch that is moved by the servo to complete the circuit. In the last video, I used this rail mount that I built from 8mm linear bearings. It is a force gauge using a load cell connected to an Arduino. When it's powered up, it runs the thrust and power usage into a few equations and outputs my grams per watt on the LCD screen. I won't be using this scale in this video due to a few errors with the load cell readings. I'll probably have a future video on efficiency output versus normal EDF after I fix these issues. Recently, I bought a 160mm parabolic mirror made for telescopes. I wanted to set up Schlieren imaging to capture the exhaust of the engine. If you don't know what Schlieren Imaging is, I recommend looking up some other videos online, but I'll give a quick explanation. Using the mirror, a point light source, a camera, and a razor blade in this configuration shows the different density of air where the light source passes through. The razor blade blocks the more dense air and allows the less dense air image to pass through, which points at the camera and displays a visual of air density in black and white. I tested the setup with a candle at first and the results seemed promising. You can see how undisturbed the flow of hot air from the candle is until it is blown out. I also tested the setup with the lighter to see a higher speed of air move and it captured it flawlessly. For the testing of the engine, I used three camera angles. One above the engine, one pointing at the exhaust, and a third camera setup for Schlieren imaging. You can see the mirror behind the engine to get a good view of the exhaust. I'm going to show the main two angles and then after, I'll show the Schlieren imaging angle. In the exhaust, you can see a very strong vortex. This starts from the compressor wheel and follows all the way through to the exhaust. I believe I'm losing pressure because of this, which isn't giving the engine a chance to reach max efficiency. I think by adding a few stators to the compression stage would fix this, but that means this is now closer to a true jet engine than it is a ramjet. I would classify this and the version with stators as a hybrid engine that needs external forces for compression that are not powered by the combustion itself. Taking a look at the Schlieren imaging, you can see how turbulent the exhaust is. Sadly, that's a loss of thrust and efficiency. In the first clip, the setup wasn't perfectly lined up, but in the next clip, I repositioned everything and you can see the expansion cone where the separation of the wake is happening. 
I wish I had a slow motion camera to film this and track individual points of flow. This would help in testing different nozzle types to see which would be most suited for this application. I haven't seen anybody else film a close up of any type of gen engine with Schlieren imaging. It's interesting to see for the first time. I think this setup would also give good data using color filters instead of the razor blade method. I want to do an entire video on Schlieren imaging these types of engines in a future video. But going forward, I have two options. I can either go back towards an EDF afterburner, which is how the series started, or the other option is to continue on this path and eventually build a fully working gen engine from mainly carbon fiber. I would love for all of you to leave your suggestions in the comments on what I should do next and any advice on the video. Thanks for watching.